Jane is 13 years old. She's coming home from middle school one day, walking home, and she sees a car behind her. She sees two men in the car. The car stops. The driver gets out and asks her, how old are you? She says, 13. The driver then grabs her, forces her into a car where there's a second man in the back seat. The man in the back seat immediately starts to fondle her breasts and her groin. Then she begins to cry, and he then pulls off her clothes and begins hitting her because she's crying and screaming and fighting. That man then rapes her in the back of the car. They then drive her to what she describes as a white house. And in that white house, which they have to carry her in because she's still screaming and crying, they tell her, they take her into a room where there's a mattress on the floor, and they tell her, take off your clothes. The man from the back seat rapes her again and again. She's held all day, all night. Then at 4.30 in the morning, she's told to get dressed and get in a car. Those two men drive her to a convenience store and tell her to get out. She then goes to, um, her, she goes to find her, 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 her house and her mother takes her to the emergency room where she gets what's called a sexual assault kit taken or a rape kit taken, which is evidence um, from a rape um, that's taken at a hospital. That evidence was collected but just set in storage and nothing happened with all that evidence from that. And in fact, nothing happened after she reported it. Jane's story is the first one I read as a researcher working with unsubmitted rape kits or sexual assault kits in Cuyahoga County in early 2015. And her story stuck out to me because I just couldn't imagine what she had to go through. But what I came to found out, find out is that Jane is only one of so many victims in Cuyahoga County, across the nation, and in Akron, whose rape kits were taken and never tested. In fact, in Cuyahoga County, there's approximately 5,000 just from 1993 to 2009 that were never tested. And what they think is approximately 6,000 more, they haven't even started testing, uh, counting yet, they think there's 6,000 more pre-1993 in Cuyahoga County that have never been tested. So what is a rape kit? So when someone goes to the hospital, they get a rape kit collected, and it's evidence where they swab and they photograph. It takes four to six hours for a, a sexual assault kit to be taken. And if you think what happens, and what most people think happens, is that you go to a hospital, you have a sexual assault kit taken, and then the police come and pick it up, they take a report, they submit that kit to be tested, and then the results come back from that test, and you use that for prosecution and investigation, and the case is thoroughly investigated. But if you thought that, you would be wrong, because life is, in fact, not CSI, and it doesn't work that way. What actually happens in, across the nation, but it happened in Cuyahoga County and in Akron and PD, is that they just simply went into storage. But most of the time, victims never knew that their kits weren't tested. They assumed because they took it that something would be done with it. But instead, they were just put in police department's warehouses. Now let's fast forward to current times. Back then, when Jane was assaulted, DNA testing wasn't available. And when it was, it was too expensive to, to really test the kids. But now, the technology is very cheap. It's less than $500 to test a kit. And become, they can use less DNA, it's very fast. Fast forward now, Ohio has passed a mandatory test all state so that now in Ohio, every single sexual assault kit must be tested. 
And because of that testing, across the state, the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigations, which is a state crime lab, has tested over 12,000 kits from across the state of Ohio. And of 14,000, so almost all of the kits have now been tested in Ohio. In just Cleveland alone, there were 4,000, over 4,000 kits that have, have now been tested. If you don't recognize what those cities are, the next one is Toledo. Toledo has 1,700 kits that have now been tested. And Akron, where we are, has over 1,400 kits that have now been tested. So they had them submitted. They know the results. So what are we doing with the results of all of that testing? In Cuyahoga County, the answer is a lot. In 2013, Cuyahoga County started the Sexual Assault Kit Task Force and has become the jurisdiction that has had the most number of convictions from testing backlog kits of any jurisdiction in the whole United States. Um, as of last week, they have convicted 266 defendants from backlog rape kits. So now that we're doing all this, what do we know about this information? And how are what we're learning helping challenge our assumptions about rape and, and victims and offenders? First of all, what we're learning is that you can't pick and choose which kits should be tested because even when technology was available, they, only, they got to cherry pick which kits to test. But now we know that you should be testing all kits. One of the main reasons you should be testing all kits is because there's a lot of serial offenders. In fact, in Cuyahoga County, over one-fourth of all defendants are linked to more than one kit. Let's take that in. That, so I'm a stats person, I'm a researcher, but maybe not everyone else in the audience is. One-fourth, so a quarter over a quarter of all defendants had hit to other kits that were just in the backlog. That doesn't mean about other rapes that weren't reported. That doesn't mean about other kits that were tested. That doesn't mean about all the other ones along that. That's just the pool that's set there. Over a fourth of the defendants have hit to each other just by DNA. We also know that a fourth of the defendants in our sample are raping strangers and non-strangers, which is counter to what most people thought prior to this initiative. Why is that important? That's important because if you, the person who's a non-stranger knows your name, and that name is in a police report, and when it's then linked to the stranger one, you've solved an unsolved crime by linking those two and testing all kits. Another thing that's very important that's changing our assumptions and challenging what we know about uh, offenders is that the who, what, when, where, and why, or your offending pattern, actually varies very dramatically across the different assaults. So most people sort of thought that they were particularly well organized and structured, and they have a particularly organized way, a methodical way of assaulting, but when you read, read the case files, you see that's simply not the case. For example, one defendant who had three rapes, he raped a sleeping neighbor, a sleeping friend, and a, both females, and then he raped a sleeping male who was a disabled um, man living in a group home. Without the DNA testing, you would never have put those together. Another example is that one man had two men hold a 13-year-old girl down at a at a party while he raped her, and then two months later raped his three-year-old son. Those would never have been linked together had it not been for the DNA testing. We are also learning that we should investigate all the cases, not just the ones with DNA in them. And the reasons for this is that those without DNA have named suspects, or without, many of them have named suspects already in the case files. So in fact, you didn't really even need the DNA testing to have an investigative lead. You just need someone to investigate the case. There's also additional items besides a sexual assault kit, that, uh, besides the contents of this kit that could be tested, such as clothing and sheets. 
and Cuyahoga County goes through the whole inventory and sees if there's anything else that they can test for DNA. And sadly, lastly, what we're learning from looking at these old case files is that most of these investigations were closed very quickly. A fourth of them were closed within one day of opening. So, vic you know, think about a case closing within a day after a victim had just been assaulted. Um, oftentimes, victims are not informed about the process. They often don't get victim advocacy, in particular in the early 90s. So, what we're learning is that we need to also change the way that we investigate cases and use current practices and by looking at the cases back then. So testing is the right thing to do. Testing helps you find serial offenders and get them off the street. But we also did an analysis shows that testing actually saves you money in the long run. So in Cuyahoga County, as of January of last year, Testing and investigating the case had cost $9.6 million. A lot of that from you and all of us because taxpayers paid for the testing of that through the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigations. However, the cost averted from actually following up on these cost 48 point, saved the community $48.2 million, which is a net savings of $38.7 million or if you want to think about it per kit, it's a, over 8,900 or close to 8,900 for each sack that was tested brings a savings to the community by getting these offenders off the street. But more importantly, it saves money because you're doing something with the testing of a kit. It's not enough to test. That's an important first step, but there's so much more we have to do after we test the kit. If if what I've talked to you today hurts your soul a little bit and makes you very sad, I'd like to end a very depressing talk, which everyone always, I bring down in any conversation. In a, <laughs> my husband always asks me to please not talk about rape at dinner. <laughs> I try my best. Um, but what can you do? What can you do is very important. And I would call, I would ask all of you to really Think about how you can make a difference in your community for all the victims who never get a voice, who, whose kits were never tested, or whose investigations were closed very quickly. And I would say by organizing, you can do many different things. First of all, I want to say if you were a survivor of sexual assault and you had a kit tested and you were not specifically told the results of that kit, please contact the police department where the assault occurred. They now have to test all kits and if you haven't been informed, um, please ask about the results of those kits. If it's in Akron, you should call the major crimes unit at Akron PD. If it's in Cuyahoga County, you should call the Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office because they will have that information. Of course, you can always um, contact me if you need, uh, if you're looking for more information, I can help with that. But if you are interested in organizing more for this, I would say there are several people that you should contact. One would be your local Cuyahoga, uh, would be your local prosecutor's office because those First of all, they're elected, and so they're, they're more likely to be responsive to the community. Start asking them, when am I going to start seeing prosecutions from all these tested kits? We, we have these offenders' names. When are they going to be investigated, and what are you going to be doing with those kits? You should also contact your local police department and ask them the same questions. I can tell you that across the state, Cuyahoga County is the only one who's really secured resources to follow up on these kits. So that means in Akron, in Toledo, those results are sitting in case files. Nothing substantial is being done with many of those kits, which means those serial offenders are going to keep raping. I would also suggest contacting your local county council. In Cuyahoga County, county council gave a substantial sum of money to help speed things along because they realized that they had rapists on the street and they just couldn't take 40 more years to go through these case files. And so it's not a, it, in the large scheme of things, getting a few more investigators doesn't cost a whole lot of money and there's money there in aggregate. So contact the local county council. But lastly, I would probably say is that Contact your local media because 
All of this got started in Cuyahoga County because reporters from the Plain Dealer started asking questions. Tell the media that you want to see something happen from this, that you want the offenders to be held accountable, and you want local uh, elected officials and local officers to be able to follow up on these. Lastly, we can't really test our way out of the problem because testing is simply the first step. Our research shows that we really need to improve the way that we handle sexual assault so that one day how we treat sexual assault will change and nothing like this happens again. Thank you. <laughs>